Not long ago, I brought you the first in a series of quick tips for arguing with atheists by Catholic apologist Scott M. Sullivan. The first one was sad, but hardly surprising. After all, we've seen other Catholic apologists trying pretty much the same tactic and failing miserably. Surely Sullivan can do better when he starts to talk about logic, right? Don't hold your breath. Hey guys, Scott Sullivan here with Classical Theist, and in this video we're going to talk about tip number two on how to argue with an atheist. Please tell me you're going to do a better job this time than you did on your first tip. You know, where you essentially told budding apologists to run away and hide any time a rational, intelligent, educated atheist came along to rain on the parade. Please do better. Please do better. Please do better. Okay, so the second tip now on how to argue with an atheist involves some preparation on your part. You're going to have to learn logic. Learning logic is extremely important. It involves some work, it involves some time, but you have to do it because logic is the science of proper reason. It trains your mind to think properly, to think logically. It helps you arrive at conclusions validly. So you have to embrace it. You want your mind to be trained to think correctly. It has to, has to work right, in other words. And that's what logic will help you do, because it is, again, the science of proper reason. He's not going to do better, is he? Now, yes, I agree wholeheartedly that learning logic and reason is absolutely essential to being a rational person, able to critically evaluate claims and examine arguments. He's certainly not the first apologist to say that this is absolutely essential, but I suspect that, like all the others, he doesn't really mean it. Religion doesn't react well to logic. Religion relies on faith, and faith and logic are mortal enemies. I'm not trying to be insulting here. I'm simply reporting the truth, that you can't get to religious assertions by using logic. You can only get there by throwing logic and reason and skepticism and critical thinking out the window and diving into bed with blind and fanatical faith. This is not going to end well for Sullivan. So, you know, don't be intimidated by it. You know, some people are kind of scared. Gosh, logic, that's scary. Don't be intimidated by it. Just embrace it. You can learn this. Anybody can learn this, all right? This is just a course, I think, that's, that's open to anyone who wants to put in the time to do so. And, and it, it, it just pays off a lot of, a lot of benefits. You're going to learn about truth and falsity. You're going to learn about the difference between valid and invalid arguments, the difference between probable and demonstrative arguments. All these things are extremely important when you're engaging in a rational intellectual discussion like this, like you, like you would be if, you, if you're arguing with an atheist. But that's the thing. You don't really want to know how to reason rationally, how to construct logically valid arguments, and how to examine assertions critically, because the second you do that, you're going to have to conclude that all your religious claims are utter nonsense and wholly unreasonable. That's precisely why logic and religion don't go together. Religion cannot stand up under the damning light of rational thought. Faith, by its very nature, is not rational. Belief in things that cannot be seen, cannot be tested for, cannot be demonstrated, those are not rational. The first tentative steps into a world of reason and logic and critical evaluation are often the first steps away from religious faith. I'm sure this is something Sullivan doesn't want to happen, so I'll recommend a half-assed version of logic that's directed outward at atheists and never inward at the blind faith of the theist. Before you do that, that involves some proper preparation. You wouldn't get into a, a boxing ring, right, without first working out on the heavy bag, practicing all your punches, skipping rope, you know, doing all that proper training. Well, in the same way, don't get into an argument with an, with an atheist without proper training. And that proper training here is a course in logic. So please, learn these important rules of proper reason like you would be if you were studying logic. Okay, I know I pointed this out in the last video. Figured it was a glitch or something, but what the hell is this black and white video stuff that seemingly gets stuffed into all of these quick tips? What is the significance? Is he just being artsy? Who the hell knows? Of course, he never directs anyone to any courses on logic. He just says people ought to take them. Well, I guess we can consider ourselves lucky that he isn't trying to sell something. I'm really wondering if he understands what he's telling his students, though. If your typical theist learns logic and learns to apply it universally as they should, then there's no way their religious beliefs can survive. One of the most basic ideals in logical discourse is that of a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an idea that is testable, yet has not been tested. 
It is the lowest level of critical thinking, an idea that we might think will explain an observation. We then set out to test it using objective evidence. However, God doesn't even rise to the level of a hypothesis. It's just not a testable idea. It falls beyond the ability to rationally evaluate and therefore must be rejected as unfalsifiable. As reasonable people do not accept ideas that cannot be tested, it makes no sense to believe in invisible leprechauns and undetectable fairies. The idea of a god has to be rationally discarded as well. That's why religion and logic don't play well together. Sullivan, I'm sure, only advocates a very limited form, all directed outward, as I said before, while maintaining blind faith and unassailable conviction within. That's just not how this works. Now, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, then click the subscribe button right here. What that'll do is it will subscribe you to my channel. And that means that whenever I release a new video, you'll be notified about it right away. Because we wouldn't want to miss any opportunity to roll on the ground laughing at the absurdity of religious fanaticism, would we? Also, I want to give you a copy of my free book. Click this image right here. This is the How to Answer a Jesus Critic book. So click this image. It will take you to my website. You can enter your email address, and I'll email you a copy of this free book. It's a quick little read on how to answer the most common objections to Christianity. Now, if you're on a mobile device watching this, the links in the video don't work, but you can click them right down there in the video description. So I want to thank you for watching this video, and God bless. Like I said last time, you have to give them an email address in order to get this so-called free book. That means that they're sending something other than the book to people who sign up for it, and that by definition is called spam. If he just wanted to give away the book, he could have a direct download link on his website where people could get it entirely anonymously. Any bets they start asking for donations almost immediately? Besides, if these quick tips are any indication of the quality he's put into his free book, I wouldn't be wasting my time. So there you have it. Another supposed quick tip that has left me completely unimpressed. What do you think of Scott Sullivan's supposed expertise on arguing with atheists? Please let me know in the comments. While you're there, like, subscribe, and share, and please come back when I bring you quick tip number three, which certainly can't be as ridiculous as the first two, can it? Only time will tell.